Now that we've moved to the back office portion of the software, let's discuss employee maintenance and employee files. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Setup, Employee Setup, Employee Files, and we'll see this screen appear. Now here's all the employees here. We can show all employees or just, you know, right now we don't have that many, so we just have all of them that fit within this window. So if you see as I click through each individual employee, that all of their information changes. Their title is going to change, their access code is going to change, and so on and so forth. Now one of the things that we'll discuss in just a second are security settings. And you can see that these are the security levels that you assign to the employee right here. And this is their access code. You see I've been moving through the system with just my pin code of one and you actually can apply a swipe card to them or you can do biometric fingerprinting so let's actually go down to the guy that I've been using Oscar and you see his access code is one we've got him only as a cashier so let's change him to a supervisor and then you see he's got the highest access and then let's assign an MSR card to his file so you take the card in your swiper, and you see the number's been populated right there. So you can't see that number. It's just an encoded serial number within the card, and we definitely can provide those for you. Um, but they're very easy to come by, and you can see that it just creates an additional way to access the system. Okay, so if you want to create a new employee, we're just going to go down to New. Yes, I'd like to save the existing changes. And we're going to name a new employee. Put the name in there. We can put their uh, uh, account number in there, tax account number. We can put their phone number in there. And we can put their mailing address. And you see the zip code's already been in there. We'll assign a job title to this person. and we'll give them decent access as a cashier. And we're not gonna assign a swipe card, their preferred language, and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. You see the, the multiple languages in here. And then if they're going to order in a secondary language, you can see that here, and are they a driver? So you see that that's how you set up a new employee. So let's save the changes, and we'll move on to scheduling. Moving on to the scheduling of employees, let's take a look. Let's go under the payroll tab. You can see a variety of features right here that are going to give you modification options to an individual employee. One in particular I would like to talk about is the scheduling not being enforced. The default of the system is to enforce the schedule, which means that you have to schedule within the system so that, that your employees ha can only clock in at the individual time that they're scheduled. The thing we want to talk about is the security kind of side of this. Let's say two buddies are working together and the one's going to clock in the other when the other is not there and steal from the company. Well, we want to mitigate that. That's the whole reason for point of sales, to mitigate the, that kind of theft and have great reporting. So we would actually click this, though, if it's like an salaried employee uh, or, you, you know, you, you really just don't have time to schedule and you just want to, you know, log your sales. So if you want to have this not be enforced, you're going to have to click this button. So let's go back to the general tab and talk about the work schedule. So we clicked at the work schedules at the bottom right of the screen. You can see right here, this same window right here is working. Now, one of the things, if you have a lot of employees, you can actually just select an individual job code or job title and just, it, you know, like let's say you have a manager that's just over the hostesses or hosts, and then you have another manager that's over the managers and another manager over cashiers, et cetera, et cetera, and they want to do that individual uh, um, scheduling, that's the way that this will work. So let's say we have a schedule for Chris Allen right here, and this is uh, Monday and Tuesday. We already have him scheduled 8 to 12, and if we want to make an edit to that schedule, we can, and we can actually make him work a double. If we click also, it'll actually create, uh, if there's going to be a space in between that's longer than just if you want to log for a break, you can actually add that right there. Um, you can delete that day, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to add Wednesday, we can go ahead and add that. 8 to 12 on Wednesday. And you can see here that the total hours are being populated right here, and the regular hours, overtime, and double time hours are right there. So you can see how the scheduling is going to work. Now, the thing I want to discuss as well is copying a schedule. Now, 
you, sometimes the schedule is going to be different. You're going to have schedule requests, et cetera, et cetera, from your employees. And you can actually set a default schedule and edit that with the schedule request. So don't feel like you can never use the copy the schedule feature if you know, you're going to have a lot of schedule requests. Go ahead and use it and make your edits appropriately. And that's how scheduling is going to work. With respect to job titles or job codes, uh, there's a couple of different places to do that. You can see right here when we've gone to employee files again, you have the job title here, and you can actually choose from the drop down list. Now, how do you edit this drop down list? Well, you have the edit function right here, which is going to be a repeatable function throughout the software. So if you were to press this button, you can see that you can edit all of your job titles here. And we can create a new one. And this is going to be a repeatable function as well. Anytime you want to create something new, you just press the new button. And we're going to add a job title. So let's go ahead and add one. All right, what we're doing is we've created a shift manager job title. Default security level, we're going to put it at four. They don't quite need five level five access because they're just managing shifts. And we'll give them a pay rate of $12.50 an hour. And we can actually have them receive tips, which as a shift manager probably know. And we don't want to really hide this job title. But this is something I wanted to tell you, is that throughout the system, you're going to see show hide features. You don't really de delete things in here. You just show or hide them. So that's just one of the things to keep rem reminded of. So we've added the shift manager position in here, and we're good to go. And that's basically how you're going to edit a job title from the employee files portion. Now let's go here. And let's go to Employee Setup, Job Titles, and you're going to come up with that exact same thing. And we see the Shift Manager that we just created is already there. So that's another place that you can access it. Let's talk for a few minutes about system access and security settings. You can see here that here's all the employees again. And you can see that their access level is changing. You can see this guy has the lowest access. And the gentleman that we've been using, Oscar, throughout the entire time, you see he has the highest level of access. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, I, great, I see the highest and the lowest access, but how do we assign each specific function a security level as well? Like you have to have a minimum security level to perform the function. Well, let's go to that screen. That's going to be right here in security settings. We're going to go to back office, and then in between store and station settings is going to be security settings. Now, right here is where you're going to assign. As you click through, you're going to see that I already have a default right here created. You see this is changing up here. Everything that I click through, accessing a daily closing report, you see you got to have level a minimum level five access. Discounts required by manager. You definitely have to have at least level three to do those kinds of things. So basically, with respect to your job codes in your business, you want to say, okay, this job code is basically going to be a one. You know, so you have bussers or you have um, stock boys or things like that. And then you have the uh, hostess or the host, the cashier, you know, you want to you want to move them up in system access. So then you're going to have shift manager be about four, and then manager owner be be level five. Now you can use however how all of those settings however you want, but just this is the arduous process that you have to go through as a business owner. So you're going to look at security access for delivery status. You're going to choose an access code. Pretty much everybody's going to need to see something like that. Then you're going to look at uh, you know, access to, to uh, driver tracking. You're going to see those things. Now you can go through and you can change. And you just saw me do that a second ago. You just, if you're using your keyboard, you can definitely just use the up and the down button to change the access level. But basically, what we're going to want to do is adjust each of these and go through the entire list and say, okay, great, this is what I want to do for my business. Uh, and pretty much level five access, and what I, I, I pretty much try to say all the time, level five access is the only access that should be able to access the back office because that has payroll, very sensitive information. So with respect to security settings, this is what you're going to have to do to really tighten your business. Payroll. It's something that you can do within the software, or you can kind of merge it with QuickBooks and manage your accounting that way. Now, this does have an accounting integrator, and you can actually map the data and migrate the data over to QuickBooks and use your accounting that way. But this is like a big calculator. Basically, you're going to set up within all of your employee files. Let's go to Employee Setup, Employee Files again. And let's go to the Payroll tab this time. Now, when you set up your job codes, you can have a default pay wage. Now, you can individualize or itemize 
and change that within an individual employee and give them a specific pay rate that is different than what the, um, the job code allows. So you can see here that this person's on an hourly basis at a pay rate of $8 an hour, and we're good to go on that, on that point. So let's move on to actually paying employees. So you click on the pay employees button right there. It's, a, it's, it's the shortcut buttons. And we're going to go to Oscar, and we're going to move him over. Now, granted, he, uh, we haven't really clocked him in a lot, so he's not in here. But basically, what you're going to do is you're going to move, you can move everybody over, you can move everybody back, or you can take a couple of people, move them over, and actually then you pay the employee, and that's how you're going to process payroll. Now that we're in the payroll screen, and I've showed you how to move employees back and forth, let's actually pay somebody. Let's move Chris over there, and let's move Eric over there, and William over there. Now you can see that you can select these individuals, okay? You can also see that there's zero dollars here. So let's pay Chris a little bit more than zero. It's going to give him a hundred dollars. Let's add additional pay to him. And then add additional pay to this guy. So I'm glad I'm getting paid the most. And let's actually put the payroll end date in there. All right, so now we have the payroll date in there. We can preview the payroll, or we can actually pay. So let's pay. Yes, we're going to pay these employees. And here's your payroll report. You can export this report to Excel and modify it however you'd like. And then you can just go through this report and you can see that, okay, this individual was paid here. And here's all of their earnings and all their reports and additional pay, overtime rate, regular rate, et cetera. And you can see that the regular rate is appearing due to the job code that we have established. So that's the report, and that's really how payroll is going to work.